You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get owned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get owned until tonight There we go. It worked, I think. You hear me okay, Robert? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody uh, to the 7 Minute Security uh, live stream. Uh, here with our friend Robert McCurdy, who does cool things, cool security things at a cool security place. Um, Robert, I don't know how much you want me to say, so how about I'll toss to you to give whatever intro you feel is uh, fitting. Oh, yeah. In there. oh yeah, the, the intro sounds so much slower when you don't listen to it at 1.5. <laughs> I'll, use it, I'll use it listen to like 1.7 something so yeah i work for work for newell brands kind of a security engineer role support the stock uh do some sim stuff supporting them and kind of onboarding data and helping people make use of our sim and our our automation platforms and stuff for for the SOC. so um you know background in pen testing and uh doing consulting and stuff kind of been on all sides of the fence from it to just straight up physical testing and all that type of stuff so i've, I've been, kind of been around for a while and starting to show my age but um i get a fair amount of time to do research at my current role so cool. this is kind of one of the little projects that i've been playing with and and hopes to make it easier for people to get to get to the fun stuff that's awesome i really appreciate you you being here i've i've uh so so folks are welcome to uh oh, and if i was a good podcast host you know i'd be able to just toss up links but um i think we kind of i believe we met via slack which uh 7ms.us slash slack you can join our slack channel that is full of smart people like robert who will uh just a bunch of nice people who will help you and be gentle about your security questions like it's very noob friendly that kind of stuff so i feel comfortable asking smart people like Robert uh, questions. And that will also be, Robert, my role today. As you show Jamboree, I'm going to be that guy like at the conference that just won't stop talking like, hey, but what about, you know, what about Python versions? You know, that would oh, be yeah, the role. Yeah. I wouldn't say smart. That I wouldn't say I wouldn't go that far. Um, well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've, I've, I've seen Jamboree, just your videos and uh, some of your appearances and, and the GitHub. And I just go, boy, I wish I, I could do some of that. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn on your screen sharing in a moment, but, but Jamboree, if I'm pronouncing this right, stands for Java Android, Ma is it Magisk? Magisk, I think, yeah. Burp Object Root Emulator Easy. And I'm a person who loves uh, kind of like make your own acronyms as well. Um, maybe could you start, before we dive into the technical technical bits of Jamboree, could you talk a little bit about this project as far as, I, I always like to know what what spawned this? Did you have a challenge? Was it just like, sure. here's a need, I can code something to solve this problem? Or how did Jamboree come to be? It came about because for about a six month period, I was the web app testing guy and started getting back into Burp Suite and started rummaging through some of our uh, applications and seeing you know, the average code mishaps. And you know, stumbling across a, a large share of mobile apps. I mean, Newell owns I don't know how many brands at this point. They can't even tell me. So, um, trying to track what you don't know you own is a bit difficult. So I started to kind of build out uh, the mobile testing side of it through Android. So, you know, having to build the environment up and setting up those tools and setting up the certificates and setting up the emulator. And you know, when your boss tells you to test the web app, it's not like you can go download like Chineseium Knox app player or, you know, uh, <laughs> well, Net, Net Beans or whatever the other one, BlueStacks, um, those are all just gross um, as spyware or even malware. Um, so I, it's, you know, I couldn't do that in good faith and didn't have any hardware laying around or anything to, I could that I could use for work. Um, so it's kind of build your own. And that's kind of where all this came from is I want an easy emulator it's legit and I don't have to worry about, you know, craziness being in there outside of what I put in there myself. So. Very cool. Well, if you're right with you, I'll, I'll, I'll flip the dial here to, to share your screen and we can start looking through this, huh? Yeah. 
All right, let's see. I'm going to do this and then, oh, good. It made us in the lower right. I think everything's positioned uh, well. So first thing to mention, right, this is, you, you've made this available. Price yeah. Complete. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I try to focus on, you know, making whatever I create free and cl as close to open source as I can. And then also I try to make it portable and kind of almost idiot proof. Um, so a lot of times, you know, it's the whole automation curve where you build something and then you realize that, you know, it took two minutes to actually do it manually, but, you know, I wanted to build automation and that took like two weeks. Instead <laughs> of two minutes. So um, over time, you know, I got more and more ideas to throw stuff together with it and make it uh, easier to do. And I think it started out as like a bad script and then I've been moving more and more into PowerShell stuff because it's so much more powerful. Uh, scripting language than bad scripts, but um, yeah, it's cool. I try to make it portable. I try to make it easy, and I try to make it stand on its own. And a really other big focus is without administrator. So, whatever tools I come up with or whatever things I have, I try to create it so that it needs the least amount of privileges to run on the system um, that it possibly can. So, that's kind of what I'm trying to work through with this. Also, is have everything stand up and not need to have admin to do. 15 different things so oh yeah okay so you don't need don't need admin rights to be able to do not necessarily it you do need um hardware acceleration of some kind and okay. there is a way to do it with the existing windows if you have it enabled but there's you know there's three different ways to support the hardware acceleration and whichever way you use and if you're lucky you might already have the windows one and figure out a way to make it work um, so that's kind of my next steps is try to use the Windows built-in acceleration. So if you happenstance to have that uh, enabled, then you wouldn't have to have admin at all to to get the tool to run. So sweet, it's, it's, it's an initial driver for the Hexium stuff to make it make it go. But yeah, um, I can kind of talk about the approach or just kind of go through the tool sets. Um, if you'd like yeah sure yeah give us a little overview of the yeah the background that we can, can yeah see. i mean it's it's more or less you know java android magic spurk objection root emulator easy i'm trying <laughs> to do Roll the acronym right. soup there I to like give us, yes to to you know i put all the words for the different types of support so i put in here like status and automation script so here's like all the bits and pieces that i'm trying to add to in here and so i took each one of these words and i throw it threw it in one of those acronym generators oh, and really? it gave me, it gave me jamboree was the only word that would actually made any sense at all. So okay. um, out of all the letters of beginning of each one of these words, that yeah. was the, the closest I could get to something, uh, something interesting. So yeah, cool. But yeah, um, you know, it's the approach is, you know, making that Android testing easier yeah. so that you don't have to worry about setting it all up and it's the least amount possible. There's more automation I can drive into it so that it'd be like, you know, maybe a couple of buttons instead of like six or eight that I have now. So, um, but it all depends on, you know, who's using it and if it starts to get traction, then I'll put more time into it. But um, the idea is that, you know, you, once you get hardware acceleration enabled, it sets up the environment so you can run Android apps and pen tests without, you know, adware or malware of like BlueStacks or Knox. You can get Bloodhound, the Active Directory tool kind of set up. It's the older version, it's not the Docker based, but okay. set that whole environment up without having to install, uh -huh. you know, Neo4j and set up that and set up, uh, you know, Java and all that. It'll pull it all down for you and run it all with like one long. Java command instead of having to go through their tutorial of how to get the community oh, version of goodness. Neo4j installed. So um, I, it kind of takes care of that mess. I'm I'm sold already because for me on pen tests, that's what I'm always doing is like on my NUC that's out at a client, I'm doing the whole like, you know, took the sharp pound vacuum up. Okay, now I got to get, all right, so neo 4 and then the Java version. And then also even in our pen test class, it's like I kind of have people do it manually more just to appreciate like and just understand how you got to stand up all yeah. these things but um boy to be able to just uh <laughs> just say set up and then you'd be presumably ready to just display that important display that data just all self-contained 
yeah, yeah. it's it's quite yeah. a, it's like one big long um neo or j that's like one oh. really big long command um here's the the one liner to run just neo4j without having to actually have it installed so you're calling oh. java with the argument list of a lib file and then a b like a base directory and yeah some kind of org and then some kind of console so really you're doing all this installing of the community version just to get that one command line um so it took a bit to reverse engineer that one piece and realize oh that's all i need to do i don't have to install any services or any of that garbage you just get this one command line you're done um so and like does java, all that work for you. the java part of it is also just like standalone or do i need to do yeah. like a java yeah oh, for for the um bloodhound stuff you don't need yeah. admin at all um and i mean obviously you need sharp hound to be running as the domain user yeah to get that initial thing yeah so you know you can run it outside of you know a, a protected user just in case you know you're shifty about whatever running arbitrary scripts on online but yeah it's just that one line that fires it all up for you and pulls down the right you know java environment and sets your environment variables for you and all that mess so um awesome i've been using that for a while just to kind of make ease the process of like there's got to be a way to get this neo4j to run without having to install services and i don't like installing services i don't like installing software i like having everything in a little folder so i just run it and mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about you know figuring out how to get admin or escalate privileges or you know worry about cleaning up some weird service that's running on my computer now so yeah but i'm, I'm glad they went the docker route it is a million times faster now so the, that's just the old version if you had to you know in a pinch yeah well actually i think well just don't have admin yeah i don't want to tangent us too much but i've just recently yeah. started playing with community edition and it is really cool because it's kind of like boom one docker command you're up and going but it, it's it's out of the box it, it is missing um yes. like, yeah yeah pathfinding and some like mm -hmm key features that I rely on. So it's got a ways to go. So I still use the old version quite a quite a bit. So okay. Well yeah, it's definitely something to check out. Um even even if you just rip the the function for the for the Bloodhound stuff and just make your own whatever. But yeah, just three buttons and you're done. Um yeah. or even two just to start up Bloodhound and then um Sharp Hound you can run on your own. But uh yeah. Yeah, the other stuff I added to just kind of make everything in one place uh, is automatic eleven eleven installer for the uh, AI art stuff so it'll you know pull down everything you need and it doesn't require any of these weird um what do they call them yeah package managers like chocolatey and the one the automatic 11 uses, uses likes to use is that uh, anaconda or conda so it it kind of runs and i think i think you don't even need admin as long as you have the drivers for the nvidia stuff um it'll all work without a uh, local admin Okay. Um, Auto GPT doesn't really work. Um, it's kind of an agent-based deal. Um, it sort of doesn't work, but uh, they have a they have a Docker version also. Um, so this one's a bit wonky to play around with. And then PyCharm is a a Python environment or a Python IDE that I had to start using because I was coding over a web browser uh, in Python, and it started getting super frustrating to have to fix my code and then wait 20 seconds to save it and then fix my code and then wait another 20 seconds to save it and then fix my code. So um, I had to get some kind of local IDE to check my code for me before I put it back on the web. And then the last bit, I kind of added Android debloat tools. So it gives you a picture of what applications are installed. Um, the label is the complicated part to get. Um, package name is easy and package path is easy. But sometimes those are cryptic and you don't really know what it means. So if you're looking for a specific thing, oh, I want to get rid of the Samsung DEX. Well, what is it called? Nope. The word DEX is nowhere in here. And there, huh. the word DEX is nowhere in here. So you wouldn't know where to find Samsung DEX because UI service is not anything that sounds like Samsung DEX. So it gives you that label name. Um, of course, it only works for the actual Android devices not the emulator because it's a binary that pulls down this this uh that pulls this application name it's it's complicated but it's a weird bit of a weird piece of kit um so yeah oh. you know how it works temporary release sets your path environment variables to kind of fix any issues with python and java and your um 
your user profile, all that stuff. Um, I think even also temp, I don't think so, but um, it sets basically the environment variables to where you launch the script from. So mm -hmm. that stuff is mostly in where it's supposed to go. So I think with a couple of things, they, you know, temp files get thrown around, um, but it's not anything important that you have to worry about tracing down. Um, let's see. And then just board a, board, build a working Python environment in 16 and, and it was a 16 meg file. So what I tried to initially do is get the legit Python binary or legit Python install. And it's like an executable inside of an M like an MSI inside of an executable. And then you have to break the MSI up into chunks and like perform some weird command lines to get it to like extract. And then you have to take that and like munge it back together. Like there's no easy way to like have a quick portable and it's like 160 megs or however much. Um, this is, this is just like the raw, it gives you like Python and, um, pip and like a couple of DLLs and that's it. Like it's not a big bloat piece of nastiness so yeah you end up with like yeah like a tiny little bit you get these just oh. seven megs of stuff and you're good like oh. you can pretty much do whatever you want from the from there uh it's like 38 megs instead of you know, an yeah. entire or an entire mess of stuff all over the place and then like a package manager or whatever but um yeah i got videos of it and this is kind of one of the should be what the interface sort of looks like now um, just a bunch of ugly buttons that do terrific things. So yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, this button the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so I think I had at one point I had like two start objections buttons in here. So um but yeah, the requirements, you know, local admin just to install uh the driver to for yeah. acceleration. So you can use the Intel Haxium, you can use this for AMD, and there's also two other options for acceleration which are the newer stuff um there's the a there's android has their own hardware acceleration that i haven't tried to get to work and then uh, windows you can use windows uh, native acceleration to do it and it has to be like enabled so um i, don't, I haven't looked into that where that sits um, so if it's enabled by default i'll probably work quicker to get it to set up uh, support in here so if it's if that hardware acceleration for Windows is enabled by default, I'll probably try to stand it up pretty quick. But I don't think it is. Okay. It's kind of like a the um, the Linux environment thing. So okay. Um, and this is kind of some screenshots and stuff, which we'll show you in a bit here. That's what our Active Directory looks like. <laughs> that's a real that's a real Active Directory right there. <laughs> oh boy. It's like 60,000 nodes or something ridiculous. Holy oh. cow. And that's why, and you get domain admin. <laughs> yeah. Everybody gets domain admin, all these people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you want, I can kind of start it up or if you have yeah, any questions. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, I want to see along just, the way. just like, um, like your, uh, I show, show it to me like I'm a kindergartner because that would be, if I landed on this page and especially again, one thing jumped out to me like, oh, you know, portable bloodhound that's the first thing i'd do is like okay how do i get this up and running and i yeah. saw there was just a you could just do the powershell one-liner right to download and run on the fly if you really wanted to go bare bones and easy button yeah, you know? yeah. um let's see Damn, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm not the only one who has uh all over my hard drive is um folders that are, say dell me D -E -L 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 -L. Yeah. and I can that's just... where everything gets dumped and i never delete it <laughs> i'll just move it into a folder called old yeah so that's that's my rule i don't delete until i'm actually out of space yeah um, and then it's so it's so like asmr time right to hit empty recycle bin and you're like ah oh, 30 gigs thank you me. thank you me yeah uh let's see uh oh my god <laughs> so you know you get all, all it takes is to put the file in a uh, where whatever path you want. It should support paths with spaces. I'm pretty sure I've checked it somewhat yeah. recently, but just to be safe, I wouldn't put a put a space in the path, <laughs> the base path. Yeah. Um, and you just right click and say run with PowerShell. Okay. Um, would you would you like before you get it ripping too heavy? Would you like to give just your general advice to you know anybody who may see this about downloading and running random stuff on the internet in general we got to be careful right we got to yeah. vet our resources that's what i always say i don't know what your uh, feelings on the matter are 
Yeah, I mean, you know, this is open source, but that doesn't mean that, you know, my GitHub gets popped and somebody puts some malicious stuff in here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's all open source. There's some weird stuff in here that doesn't even get triggered by EDR. So we have probably the top EDR uh, available. And I have full enforcement on my work laptop. And th this does not get triggered at all. Like, this is... Like, okay. Like, it, it like, creates base64 zip <laughs> file. And this is code I got from Microsoft. So it creates a zip uh -huh. file for the licensing for um, the Android Studio. Okay. And it creates a zip file through base64 and extracts it. And that's like the only shifty looking thing in here. The rest, you can read okay. it with your eyeballs. Um, okay. But yeah, it's you know a bunch of weird functions and a bunch of scripting. And it's it's fairly easy to read. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you're you're running stuff uh, from, you know, this is from Intel at some point in time. Yeah. Um, but all these, you know, the only other shifty thing I can really think of is the magic stuff, which that's to give you root and all that. But I mean, it's not any not any shadier than anything else on the internet, right? So sure, it's yeah. all there for you to look at, and you know, you can yeah, you can change just, whatever else you you want out. But yep, I just I get that question a lot during these types of presentations where people are like, you know, how do you make a informed decision and i go well you hit it on the head there right about making an informed decision don't just like i always tell people when like a new cve comes out and you want to like quickly test your company yeah. public portal for that don't just go to github and search for it you'll find like a five minute old repo that looks <laughs> legit but i almost guarantee it's going to be full of yucky stuff unless yeah, so, some weird yeah yeah obfuscated yeah. stuff but uh yeah. you know it, the, the advantage here is you don't need admin to run it at all so you can create a sandbox user that doesn't have access to anything in the system that's jailed oh and sure. yeah. you know fire this up and run it um and it, you don't need admin to play around with that's the whole kind of point of it i mean yeah. it will be slow as balzac when it comes to actually starting at the image and clicking around yeah. um but you'll at least be able to get it to fire up and run and and keep an eye on it to see if it does anything shifty yeah Okay. But, um, cool. Yeah. So this is kind of like the debug window. It kind of tells you it's it's setting paths for different things. So we're we're setting like root ABD path, which is for Magix, Java, the okay. Android environment variables, and then like the home path for Java and user profile, app data, local profile, oh, look tip, temp, and TMP. So a bunch of stuff gets reset, and this is all temporary, right? So when you run it. It's inside of this environment right here. So then when you close out, it's not going to like permanently wreck your environments or anything. Oh, um, OK. So it's all within this context of this script. And once you exit out, all your all your environment variables are all back to normal. So um, awesome. that's pretty much where that's at. So it's already kind of created some base folders to, to get you choochin'. Um, so there's the Haxium install. That's the hardware acceleration. So once you've got that going, I don't even think you need to reboot. Um, but that's the that's the Intel Haxium acceleration for the uh, Android Studio stuff. So if you ever had to install Android Studio, right, it's like a like a 30 minute process to get it up and running with a with an emulator. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I don't do anything like, with that, so that's interesting to know. Yeah, it's 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 like a big, huge, massive uh, download, and it takes forever to to run. Um, so we're gonna do Burp Suite Community first. Yeah, so, let's do that. So it detects that you know the Java folder is not there. It's not doing any kind of intelligent checking. It's just checking for a path. Okay, we well, move the partial window just up a little bit, just because the lower third yeah. thing is kind of cutting off. Uh... That's fine. But the text is showing that's a little better. Yeah, maybe up just like a tiny bit. Okay, it's turning burp suite. Okay. Oh, yeah. wow. This is doing all. Um, and are you, is there any um, sort of like logic in the code that is, um, is it like hard pointed to like, you know, whatever, uh, burp.zip off of ports where you're Yeah, saying? it's just, or it's it? just a, it's just a, um, the checking is the local checking of the file is just like checking to see if the file exists. So if you want to like update Burp Suite Community or Burp Suite Pro, you just delete the tar file. Or if you want to, you know, nuke something, you just delete the folder or delete the file or whatever it is. Um, like if you okay. break Python or something, you could just reinstall it or whatever. You can delete anything having to do with the word Python. But I just recommend you just like just create a new folder and run to start from scratch because it takes like the whole thing takes like eight minutes from soup to nuts like for the whole thing if, if that if you're if you get clicky yeah but, 
but is your like when you when you hit you know use burp suite is it going do doing like logic of like let's make sure it's the latest burp and pulling that down yeah the, the initial time yeah it does yeah. the uh um and, that, and you know there's a little bit of work behind all that too yeah. finding the latest repos for stuff um oh, so, okay that's what i was wondering if it <clears throat> it does that yeah see it does a uh, like type char so this uh, is how you get the yeah. latest that's the url to the latest burp suite community okay um, same thing for pro um it just gives you a straight boot file so you can dump that straight to a jar and, oh, nice. and you're good to go so, so you don't have to constantly babysit it or the user doesn't have to wonder like oh no is this the latest okay yeah and then every time you run burp suite it checks itself and nags you all the time so every time there's yeah. any burp updates it nags you yeah. um so like in the background it's waiting in a loop to pull down the certificate so um the certificate in here is what you need to like uh to push to the phone oh. the emulator so that you can right. do shenanigans so this is right. where you would would get that information like manually but it sits there and waits in a loop for you to actually start the proxy up and once the proxy starts it pulls it down and then now we have the certificate for verb suite sitting in here all ready to go to be pushed to the emulator once we get it going so we've, uh -huh. we've set up java we set up we download a burp suite pro and community fired up community and now we have the certificate to push to the well we have to convert it first but we uh, push we're ready to push this convert this certificate and push it to the emulator once it's up and happy that's cool and then so if i'm doing like a web app pen test and i do a couple hours tonight and then i gotta like shut down my machine for updates or something like mm -hmm. is it like temporary enough where I could go back tomorrow morning after my machine reboots and like pick up yeah. where it left off or if Jamboree closes, like does burp and like all. No, I mean, it's pretty much <laughs> as you go, it, it, you know, it, yeah, it's all, it's all a stateful, you know, environment deal. So okay. it's just as stable as anything else you're doing, except for it puts everything, it tries to put everything in the same base folder as where Jamba, Jamboree script is. Um, okay. So it okay. does kind of throw stuff all over the place. There's not a whole lot of or <laughs> organization to it, um, but I mean, it's all kind of there just that for phase. For okay. To, yeah. So like you have, you have the the binaries and stuff all in there, and it's a little bit organized. But I didn't want to go crazy trying to make everything look pretty when. No, that's um, cool. I was just thinking like, use it. like, oh, I wouldn't want to close burp and then have some routine run where it's like, okay, no. recursive delete of everything in the Jambo folder, and all of a sudden it's yeah. like, oh, I'm starting from scratch. Yeah, Where's I'll click one of these. Um, I'll click to start one of these main apps, and I'll just close yeah. Jamboree, and you know, like I'll start Burp Suite using this for whatever reason. So I'll you know click Burp Start Community, and I'll you know start up Zap or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, there's a little bit of work in getting the like Zap to work with Burp Suite. Um, that was a little bit of work, but oh, sure. yeah, it's all stateful stuff. So um, we're pretty much ready to fire off the, I kind of had the buttons in order more or less. And the start ABD will look for, um, first it'll look for the, um, look to see if the command line tools exist, the Android command line tools exist. And if it doesn't, okay. it'll pull them down and it's checking for java it says oh we already have java we're good there and it's downloading the that like 16 meg python package okay and then it's adding the dependencies for what we'll need to do run objection and frida which is the tools that you use to do inspection of android applications so it's um, python xz which is for extracting the server of Frida, and then some a couple of other things. I oh, will upgrade, upgrade pip, and something else gets installed. Whatever the dependencies for for objection are. Um, and AVD, that's for that's for testing Android. Yeah, AVD is basically the command line. Uh, AVD is basically the the Android Studio. So it's Android Studio, which comes with tons of stuff. But the only part anyone ever really needs, unless you're actually developing software for Android, is the emulator part. So people will install oh, wow. the entire, you know, Android Studio suite just to run an emulator. And I found out that this is the easiest way to do it. Um, once I got the, it was actually from Microsoft repo that had that long, you know, base 64 thing, and it would yeah. extract the license. Um, because if you try to feed like the yes button, because you have to click yes to accept the license type of thing, 
Okay. Um, it won't let you feed like Y in the carriage return to it because it's a bit like SSH trying to pass passwords in plain text. It knows like it's oh, not sure. standard input. So yeah. um, it was it was a little weird to find it, but it I guess it's part of some Microsoft automation thing, like a you know whatever. And I just happened to stumble upon it. I was like, great, this is exactly what I need to accept all the licenses for um, the Android Studio stuff to run. That's really slick. But I mean, the, what takes the longest is just downloading these images. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'm on high speed, so it took like two seconds. Um, but when right. I did this demo the second time, I used my phone, uh, my phone internet, and it still took like you know, like th two minutes to to pull down. Um, yeah. So yeah, it it pulls down Python, it pulls down the images you need to start the emulator, and then it starts it up. Um, so now you have a what do you call this? Um, a Pixel Two <laughs> with you know all the stuff you need the the Play yeah. Store and all that, and you can you can lo actually log into the Play Store and do whatever you need. Um, I usually let it marinate here for a minute to kind of start up and get like oh. so it's not pegged. Yeah. Um, so I'll just let it marinate. Usually let it marinate for at least a few seconds, so that yeah. it's not like doing a million things at once. Well, now I'll tell you what, if it needs just a second to marinate, we, we do have a, a word from our sponsor, uh, uh, Blue Mira. Um, why don't I give that a, a sec and then we'll get past marination and then we can see, uh, you know, some of the other cool things Some hotness. we can do. Is that cool? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, don't go anywhere, folks. Just uh, let's hear a word from uh, Blue Mira and we'll be right back with Jamboree. Today's episode of the 7 Minute Security Podcast is brought to us by our friends over at Blue Mira. And boy, do we love Blue Mira. Uh, it wasn't too long ago we started a podcast series called Desperately Seeking a Super Sim for SMBs because everybody needs to be watching their network and Active Directory and knowing and getting alerting when things go bump in the night. And from that series, someone from Blue Mirror reached out and said, well, uh, we're an awesome sim and we love SMBs. Have you ever heard of us? You want to give us a try? Want to give us a spin? And I said, yes, I want to literally give you a spin in my light pen test light training environment where all we do, we, me and the students, all we do every day, all day is beat the heck out of a network and punch Active Directory in the face over and over again. And Blue Mirror was like, yeah, fine, spin up a trial. Let's see how it goes. And oh my gosh, we got all sorts of helpful alerts on things that we actually cared about happening in the environment. Not too many. We weren't getting alert fatigue. We were getting just the right amount of alerts. And maybe the best thing out of that experience was that I got so excited about the alerts, I went to Blue Mirror and I said, oh, you know, it would be cool if you could alert on a couple of other things like AS rep roasting and maybe um, if someone flipped the W Digest flag on an endpoint so that attackers were able to scrape creds in clear text out of memory. I mean, that's something that shouldn't be happening on, happening on the average business day. So wouldn't it be sweet if you could detect that? And not too long after uh, that conversation, they had built detections for both those things. And that's the kind of relationship you want with your SIM service provider. You want to be able to go to them with ideas. You want to be able to take results from a pen test and say, hey, our pen testers did these 12 things. You alerted on four of them. Why is that? And if they kind of dismiss you or chuckle or say, oh, let, let us secure explain to you while you're a moron. If they do any of that, you probably want to tuck tail and run. And I would invite you instead to go talk to my friends uh, over at Blue Mira, who are very SMB friendly. Uh, I really like the whole crew over there. You've, you've heard some of their featured interviews on the podcast. And I really can't recommend them enough. So go check out their SIM plus XDR solution today. Visit bluemira.com slash 7MS to get started. Okay, and we're, and we're back. We're back, we're marinating. We're marinating the, uh, the emulator. Did it uh, sufficiently marinate? Oh, did I lose you? Or did I lose my own? No, I had myself on mute. But yeah, it's like 30 seconds. Yeah. I try to wait. Um, it's not a long time, but. OK, very cool. Yeah, I actually got to try out Blue Mirror. Um, I had a little demo of it and set it up on a, uh, they gave, away, gave you like a Debian, a Debian image to, to poke around with. Yeah. Um, and and uh, license ran out, but I didn't have a ton of time to. But it's, it's a great, it's a great. Uh, if you don't want to pay ridiculous amounts for, you know, top tier EDR and you want soup to nuts, you know, ingestion of all the good things, um, that's yeah. a great place to start. If you know, if you know what you're doing, that's, you can get a lot out of 
out of Amira. So yeah, cool. Nice. All right. Um, so kind of the next step is getting root and to to get to see the traffic, to see the encrypted traffic across the phone or the emulator, you need to in, in, inject yourself into it. Yeah. Um, and to do that, you need to install a certificate. And they used to let you install user certificates and see that traffic. Now you, it has to be a system certificate. So what we have to do is get root on this emulator. And that's what this um, root ADVD tool will do for us. It's a it's oh. it's a bat script it's a bat script and also an sh script so it's cross platform. Um, I actually had somebody ask me about, you know, hey, does this work? You know, can you port this to Linux? Can you make one for Linux? I was like, well, it's basically the same thing. You just have to convert it from shell script to or from Python or so from PowerShell to like a shell script. Um, and it wouldn't be a big overhaul. I mean, there's a couple of tricky bits in there. Um, yeah. But you know, converting a PowerShell script to a shell script. Um, wouldn't be too difficult and that's, so, that's like going back to the whole like you being a smart guy and you're like oh, i don't know about that uh here here's how you should know that you are a smart guy because you made what you just said sound so easy and it probably is to you but when it's like yeah we just got to make the emulator talk to the ide talk to the conversion and then my yeah. head just spins around like i'm in the exorcist um uh god bless people like you who just know how to do all this stuff this is so cool especially because i don't do anything um different people on my team do the android level testing but mm -hmm. i love seeing it's such a niche stuff. thing right yeah but i love seeing this like hands-on so you've you you spun up a emulator to play with and now you've you've like injected your yeah self. it's you a temporary like, root and okay. um so it created this fake boot image that we had to boot to so oh it kind of timed out so let me try it again uh let's see let's see if it'll let me run it again it has like a 60 second timer Oh, 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 okay. To continue. Wait, like, yeah, you have to like do stuff through the UI first before it. Uh, oh, gotcha. Before it it waiting for you to reboot to the. Yeah, so you scene. have to catch it. You get like a minute to do this part. So once you click to okay. install <clears throat> magic, this will pop up and you click the little install and then you say select a patch file. And then you just go to your downloads and then click this whole fake boot <laughs> thing. Okay. And then you say, oh, that's so cool. let's go. Yeah. And it's created like it's created a image file based on your current image to give itself root when you reboot. Um, okay. So now once that's done, you can go back to the main window over here and okay. just hit enter or whatever. Um, and you can kind of run this as many times as possible. And if something craps out, doesn't work, then you just yeah. start from the beginning and watch the video again. Um, it's not too terrible. Like I said, it takes like you know, all of like two minutes to get to this point. Yeah, this what you just showed, just even what you showed so far, just makes it so. Um, uh, from my point of view, I go it, it, the few times I've gone, hey, I'd like to just learn kind of a 101 on some you know emulator stuff, the, like this, the steps and the things to install and all that. It's a little intimidating, and I automatically think oh, I got to spin up a whole separate machine and stuff for that, right? But, um, to to just make it so uh seamless, um, you know, just gets me excited. I'm like. I could run this. I could at least figure out. I, I wouldn't exactly. know what to do yeah. once yeah. you show what you're showing, but I could yeah. at least get the environment going without like breaking my machine or maybe, maybe steps. with some error that I don't even know how to troubleshoot. Yep. Um, so we essentially have injected the boot stuff for to get root. So yeah. we're going to start up the emulator again. Oh, and okay. there's really only one more reboot we have to do. Um, that's when we are pushing the certificate so we've temporarily installed magis to get root and then we added like a special boot. image to boot from to give like a permanent root to the, the emulator itself and i don't take any credit for any of this this is like magic um it's a big shell script that does some weird stuff that like patches the the boot stuff so it's actually open source itself so the whole thing from soup to nuts anything shifty is actually open source um you know, as far as, you know, whatever, whatever you're pulling down yeah. uh, outside of like, you know, there's like and base APKs or just APKs with zip files in it. But um, so we're right now we're basically we've got magic installed. We're happy. <laughs> you can do this step. I don't think you have to, but you start up magic again just in the emulator and it'll kind of do like an extra step to get itself happy. Yeah. And I think it automatically restarts. Yeah. So it's a quick. 
this is a pretty speedy box. I just had to rebuild my motherboard after like 14 years of having an ancient, <laughs> ancient box. Oh wow! So okay. It's a little, it's a little speedier than, <laughs> than like your work laptop. But I ran this on uh, two conferences uh, on a little, little Windows Surface or something like that. It's one of those two in ones, um, and it ran pretty speedy. Oh, that's so cool. um magisk is all happy in theory we shouldn't get any more prompts or anything you can like update this little app which doesn't <laughs> really need to be updated but if you like to you can and this is where you can get into like installing custom modules and you can put your own modules in here and that's what we're about to do you can do um, a lot of testing too so if you want to test out a magisk module or you want to test out some kind of root kit tool you can do that in the emulator without like breaking your phone and having to like reset everything. Um, Cause I have, I have gone to, you know, front desk lady at a hotel when I'm doing consulting yeah. and I hold up two phones. One is a work phone. One is a personal phone of which I had taken the ID of Google and mashed them on top of each other. So yeah. they were both just like core dumping and panicking. Cause they, they were both the same phone. Um, <laughs> so I got to walk up and like, I know I have two cell phones in my hand, but I need to use your phone to contact my boss. Cause I don't know where I'm supposed to be right now. Um, so that was the days of, you know, not doing stuff in emulators. Yeah, quite, quite a quite a tensor fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd be I'd have it in my pocket and start melting and getting hot. I'm like, why am I pulling my? <laughs> so um, we have that burp dir file down in here somewhere, um, and we're going to convert this with a bunch of magic um, without using um, SSL Open SSL executable. Yeah. We're going to use the Windows built-in, uh, the built-in cert. It's like cert util. Cert util. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So a lot of the tutorials are like, you got to use OpenSSL and then do this thing to convert the certificate. I found a way, and it's complicated um, to make this part work. So essentially, what it does is, it um, yeah, it reminds you to set your proxy settings. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, this is setting the the proxy server to aim at your Burp Suite, so that traffic from the emulator goes to Burp Suite, and that's the information you yeah. need to put in. I'll show you in a sec. So it's pushing a module, a Magis module called, uh, it's like a user search to system, or always trust user search. And it's also, also converting that burp dir cert into a PEM certificate. And it's doing the wonky renaming that it has to do. And it does this weird uh, hex stuff. And you have to like bit flip every other, uh, every other octet or whatever you call it. It's just like a really crazy process. Um, and it's like, like it pages and pages part. and pages of tutorials on just to get that part working. Yeah. And it's like done in like, you know, two seconds. You must have been um, pretty happy when you got that part working. It's a mess. Yeah. It's just like, and I didn't want to use OpenSSL binary because I want the least amount of extra yeah. binaries on the system as possible. Yeah. So we've um, got that working and we need to shut it down so we can invoke um, so we can have that certificate be part of the system certificate. Oh, okay. So we're shutting it down one more time. And then this should oh. be the last time we have to start it back up. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, this is all against the, the emulator. So you can mm -hmm. do testing. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So we've, we, we, um, got root and then we rebooted and then we installed a module that gives us the system certificate from burp suite. So we can inspect the traffic at system level. And then it renames the file and pushes it to the phone and then restarts uh, for you or shuts it down. So now we're starting it for the last time. Now we have root, we have our certificate, and we have the warning that says, you know, this is, you got a certificate oh. in here. You okay. know, who is this? Oh, look, it's Portswigger. <laughs> so you know you've got the right certificate installed. Yeah. You got this warning sign. Oh, so um, you, you drag down just like you would and you go into the config of the wireless under network and internet and then Wi-Fi and then configure and then you go to this little pencil icon and go to modify and this is all on the video yeah uh, manual and you do that 10.0.2.2 and then the port is 80 80 and there's some magic to get the keyboard to work too it doesn't just work by default you have to do some weird file. You have to write out some weird file type in the config for Android to make it work. So we should see, if we're lucky, oh. Oh. we should see traffic popping in Burp Suite. <laughs> so the first step is seeing HTTP. Yeah. When you boot it up, you'll see HTTP if you just get the proxy settings right. 
Yeah. So you know you got the proxy settings right if you see anything in here. Yeah. You know you have the SSL certificate pushed if you see HTTPS. So yeah. we're like 90% of the way there. Yeah. You'll also sometimes get this warning that says like, um, like this network is not trusted or something, but okay. I don't see it in there. Um, let's see, it's like connected. It seems happy, but sometimes it'll pop up and say, you know, I can't get on the internet because it's trying to be SSL and it knows that it's being, oh, okay. uh, it's being, it's being whatever. So we might, we might get it, we might not, but sometimes you have to say, you know, whenever you're like on a portal, have you ever been logged into a Wi Fi portal? And an Android phone will say, I don't know if you use Android, but sometimes it'll say, you know, I'm not on the internet. Do you want to use this, this Wi Fi? Because it kind of keeps people from connected to, to, I guess, Wi Fi access points that don't have the internet. Yeah. So we're teaching now. We can do basic oh. stuff like look at the SSL traffic that's coming across, um, see basic things and, and observe like this, this is how noisy. I mean, I haven't even connected it to anything. This is a base whatever and we're already talking oh, to yeah. google and all kind of that double click and uh um, sending all kinds of information i think it's trying to do updates something like that yeah but you could um, pop open apps right and kind of get a feel for like oh what do they all call out to right when i run yeah, um, yeah. Um, there's public. other there's all kinds of other stuff you could do in here with um magis to do like um, hooking and hide yourself through JISC and uh, the different things you can do in here. And I don't know the overlap quite between that and objection and Frida, but so okay. the last step is, so what, what, what you can do is get that cert certificate on there and you, you can see the HTTPS traffic. But the problem is what people do now is called SSL pinning. So they'll take a certificate and they'll put it inside of the application and they will so that way, even if you're SSL decrypting, the traffic will be still encrypted with the certificate inside of the application itself. And it prevents people from doing this exact thing and seeing the garbage code that gets sent back and forth oh. between an application. So we'll fire this up. Um, let's see, there's a there's a button I click that will pull down like just kind of helper applications. And you don't have to do this, um, but these are like base APKs that I call it. Or it's just like different utilities and tools. Like you get to get to go. Game Guardian is for doing like uh, memory manipulation. I mean, it's the all these things are kind of shifty. Mm -hmm. um, but the Game Guardian is for like doing memory editing. So like if you want to give yourself nine 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 coins, you can play around with you know some kind of internet based game or local <laughs> applications. Um, awesome. There's some like package managers and um, uh, but yeah, that's a like a like a Chinese kind of crazy thing that. Uh, but the tool we're going to play with is this Android Goat, which is like a testing framework for um, Android or like a that, testing application. Uh, does that address, or were you saying cert pinning is just, it is what it is, or or were, were you going to say, is there a way, any way kind of around that to still see? Yeah, that, that's, that's the last piece we're missing. So we oh, had okay. that SSL okay. traffic, and I'll show you, like, this oh. is... Um, like an example application and it's got different little things you can do in here as like a hack me challenges kind of um so we're going to do network intercepting and okay. you can this is how you can check that everything is happy you can hit the oh. http button and you'll see http come in you're like all right i got http you'll hit https and you'll see oh. https come in so you're like all right cool i'm good and yeah. the certificate pinning you click it and nothing happens because yeah. I'm not in the, I can't see the pinned certificate information in there. So we're yeah. missing that last piece. And it's not, you can't really do, do much of anything unless you can see the traffic going across in that SSL pinning. So uh, the last piece we do is um, there's, you can do start objection, which is its own thing. See, so yeah, now I have two SSL <laughs> free to anti root thingies. Um, so this basically uh, pulls down a, pulls down Frida and runs a script, which it might already be in here. No, it's not in here yet. Um, it runs a anti-root script and a SSL depending script. So when you click this button, it downloads the latest version or a version of Frida server. And yeah. that has to be pushed to the phone. And then it has to be ran on the phone as an executable. And then once that happens, then there's now a bridge between the phone itself and uh, the computer or the host machine. And now it's listed, giving you a nice little list of the different 
applications that are installed, the com names. Yeah. So now it's basically asking you, hey, which which application do you want to run, and which which one do you want to SSL try and SSL strip? So we're oh. going to do that goat g o a t. This is our our test application. So now it's going to kill it if it's running, and it's going to restart it with these extra bits <laughs> of uh, script. So it's going to pull down this. Uh, so the cool. script is right here. Um, so it, like it it can't it like it helps get, like get rid of any it, it tries to inject it itself into any calls that would alert that you had you know super user or root and then yeah. at the bottom here it it does the SSL pinning stuff so this is basically two scripts combined into one yeah um, so you can have kind of everything you need without having to call two different scripts. So now we've started the script. It tells you, you know, trust blah blah blah, all the different types of SSL stripping that's in here. Yeah. Um, and you will do the network thing. And there's our HTTPS. There's the HTTP. Uh, let's clear clear all this out. So we have HTTP, HTTPS, mm -hmm. and now we have the SSL pinning stuff. <laughs> so now we can see the traffic from even an SSL pin application. Yeah. And start monkeying around yeah. with whatever we want to monkey around with. Um, it, and that's pretty much it. The other piece I'm trying to get is this um, safety net. Somebody, somebody has a safety net bypass that works with an emulator. Um, and I'd like to get this to work. And I don't know how. What the parallels are between just using Frida and having this to be fail failing, um, but you know there's multiple layers of root checking and anti debugging involved with these all these applications. So the more checks I can pass, the more things I can say instead of model. You know yeah. we could build this out to say uh, whatever we want, so we can make it say you know pixel two blah 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 and have like actual serial numbers that make sense and aren't just like de develop developer type of uh, switches, which I think some of this, some of the script does that for us. The, the JS script, I think it helps us hide and sets up the proper, like, I think they call it build prop type of stuff. Okay. Um, I don't really, it's, it's magic, but that's all open source too. So let's see, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can really kind of come in here and, you know, play with, I think I have a, I have a demo Gmail account. Uh, dot com, I think. No idea. I think it's this is like a, a throwaway account that I use for everything. And you agree to stuff that <laughs> take, I don't know what take all this all is. your privacy away. Yep. Again. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now you what 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 hung me up for a long time is that when you start the emulator you can pass a command line argument that says to use a proxy yeah. and i used that for a very long time and it kept giving me issues it kept giving me issues it kept giving me issues and finally i realized that setting it in the ui like this is more stable for some reason um because you would try to download an app in the app store and it would just crash and never finish downloading and it would, the traffic was all unhappy um, so for whatever reason setting it through the command line breaks stuff so i had to get rid of that that feature. So like, you know, I think it would be like sushi. It's like sushi roll, sushi roll 3D. Yeah. So this is like one of the like those freemium games or whatever. Oh, it also has sound too. Um which we didn't really have before back in the day. Yeah. Let me clean this out. But I mean the cool thing is you can also if you don't want to do any of this stuff and you want a really easy, you know, Python, ADB, Java, Python environment, you just click this and bam, you've got a, um, you've got a git command, you've got ADB, you've got um, an ADB shell if the emulator is running. Mm. And then you have Java here, you have, um, you have Java here, you have Python and you have git all in this little command line window. So like, you know, without admin, you can have a full, you know, development environment in, you know, seconds. Yeah. Um, and without even messing around with any of this other stuff, um, you can, you can play around with it.
but you know, I use it if I want a quick Python environment, then I use this CMD Python. And it'll boop, it'll give me a quick Python environment without all the other jazz um, needing to be installed. This is acting kind of weird. I think we'll definitely have to do if you're up for it, do like a, a part two in the near future because I feel like uh, oh, yeah. we got a chunk into all the cool things uh, Jamboree can do. Um, kid, do uh, just since since we are just kind of right coming up to the to the hour, yeah. um, do you want to just mention like? Is there something within Jamboree that's like up and coming or that you're working on or some problem you're trying to untangle that is like coming next yeah. release or um yeah one of I do have um like an actual issues. I don't know how good I am at doing software development, but I have issues and bugs and enhancements in oh, here oh. in the actual repo. Okay. Um and one of the big ones is this safety net bypass, which I'm waiting for the guy to not to reply back. Um oh, okay. That's a pretty big one that will give me like, uh, that will give us uh, like detection. Yeah, no response. Okay. So um, <laughs> this this will make the safety net stuff, which is like Google's built-in, uh, like root checking, uh, work okay. inside of a virtual machine. So yeah, I've got you know features and bugs in here, um, you know chicken and egg type of stuff. Um, yeah, the AEHD is the <laughs> emulation, Android emulation stuff that needs to be kind of figured out, but. Most of the, you know, to do the SSL stripping and get get all the emulator and stuff running, um, it's all it's all there and happy. Um, so, you know, it's it's pretty much where I can where I get lost is, you know, you'll you'll get to the point where you see the traffic, but all you'll see in the traffic is like a, a you know a, a parameter and then a hash value. Yeah, and that hash value is basically an encrypted encrypted function inside of the application that you have to basically reverse engineer and you have to find that call um, and there's some tools to like help you like hook calls for java and that's where i get lost like totally not my like lane so if you have anybody know anybody that's like a java or android hacker and they can like reverse engineer stuff that's kind of where i'm at there is a tool out there that runs with node and it requires like vb uh, the, the vb studio or something and i'm like i'm not going to install all that mess just to to try to get to this piece but yeah. um, i can get you all the way to the point where you can see the encrypted payloads but you can still do stuff uh with encrypted payloads you can like do replay attacks you can um like add a pinned extra extra hashes onto a particular thing so um, you can still monkey around with it and i would say maybe a little more than half of the applications that i look at just arbitrarily pick um, don't have like encrypted payloads it's just like straight up you know like here's like you know like the email of my of something i don't even know what this is i guess is the me logging into whatever and there should be plain text password sometimes down here somewhere actually maybe that's further up but um that's about as far as i've gotten and i get lost once they do the encrypted payloads, yep, sure. That's where they 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 lose me. But um, well, yeah, definitely we can you know do some more playing around and some more um, you know pick up pick any of these to to play around with. But yeah, well, thanks thanks a ton, Robert. This is awesome. I put the link in the chat, and and I'm sorry I got to bounce to to another meeting, but I definitely want to do yep. this is super nerdy fun. So um, I, I I I'll I'll be in touch with you. Okay. We'll yeah, it. yeah. We can we can pick pick an application. Yeah. And, start poking with it yeah that'd be great i already got some ideas so i'll i'll be in touch oh, cool. i'll be in touch soon sounds good yeah thanks, I appreciate thanks it. a lot man Have appreciate it yep you too later take care bye you've been watching or listening to seven minute security a weekly podcast focused on pen testing blue teaming and building a career in security for more episodes like this visit 7ms.us and for information about our consulting services, visit 7minsec.com.